Huh. A cardboard box. The ultimate stealth tool. A weapon to surpass Metal Gear. It could contain anything. It could contain... Nano machines. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Regrowth. As you can see, I have reached peak sexiness. Oh uh, yeah, we have the ultimate in underwater travel gear. It gives you creative level flight, night vision, full speed mining, everything you could possibly want underwater, and it even has a scuba tank to keep your breath topped up for frickin' ever. Not literally, you do need to refill it. Yes. If only it didn't come at such terrible, terrible cost to what it does when you try to move on land. Because it makes you go so slow. Unless, of course, you sidestep. Yes. Do the flipper dance. That is enough of that foolishness. So, I hope you all had fun exploring the base on your own initiative. I made that back up literally just a couple of minutes ago, so you have already seen everything I did between episodes. But just in case you're too lazy to load the thing up yourself. You see that I have buttoned up a bunch of piping over here and in other machines. I built myself this cardboard box that you saw using our lovely new precision sawmill. This thing is made using just a bunch of simple materials you've already seen me craft before. And the really... I mean, yeah, if you throw in a log, you get more planks. You get six planks instead of four. And you can split a single plank into six sticks, but I mean... Really, you you know, the, the only thing I wanted was this frickin' sawdust to make the cardboard box. Because the cardboard box... Not joking. Serious. This thing is a god-level tool. It moves freaking everything. Drawers? Yeah, not sure if they're compatible with dollies. Doesn't matter. You have the cardboard box. Anything with liquid inside of it? Yeah. Not only can you move it, that liquid's perfectly fine. These enhanced inventories chests? Explicitly not compatible with dollies. Compatible with frickin' cardboard boxes. You want to move a mana pool? You can move a frickin' mana pool. And it will not lose any mana. Yeah. God. Level. Tool. And we are going to be getting some interesting use out of it today, I imagine, because I am going to be making and arranging a drawer network. For all the things. I have cleared out a lovely, lovely space under the base where the magic is going to happen. This will be our sorting and processing area for all of our goods, and we will never have scarcity again. Ah, yes, and also this furnace tower here is more or less the same setup as the Lumery, the logistical sorter. Brings out fuel and smeltable items eight at a time. You kind of have to program it any time you encounter something new you want to smelt, but I mean, it's not a huge deal. Um, I'm out of sand. Oh well. Yeah, you, you've seen this work before. It is just taller because furnaces output from the bottom instead of out the back like bloomeries do. It is the same setup, basically, otherwise. But yes, and by building that wetsuit, I completed all these quests that are in this chapter that I know of. And I mean, uh, there, 
it, it doesn't say 100% complete yet. There must be a hidden quest, but I do not know what it is. I have searched through the forums. I have no clue. So if you know, please let me know. But by doing all that, not only, as you might have seen, did we unlock all of these mechanism quests, some of which we've already done just completely by mistake, but we have unlocked... Uh, build from, build from, build from, build from. We have unlocked... Oh, Certus Essence, of which I am going to need some to make Certus Seeds. But to make that, we are going to need 16 Extreme Essences. And remember, that is four stacks of dust per. And I only have four of them. Yeah, we need golems to do this. I am not doing that by hand. No, I refuse. I, I, I just flat out refuse. That is golem work. So, it's a good thing that we are automating this today. But yes, we have everything else that we could possibly want. I even got those image seeds. I don't know why the quest didn't. It was under enhances, right? Yeah, there it is. But yeah, these things, it turns out, are just osmium seeds infused with diamond in the metallurgic infuser. So, I mean, that's freaking easy. I thought they required Certus Essence. I have no idea what they're used for still. I haven't looked it up yet, but that's something we can discover together. So, let us talk a little bit about how we are going to tackle this whole thing. The way I see it, goods are basically going to go to two destinations. There are those essences and goods that I'm just going to want to store as is. Like these Batania petals, yeah, those are just going straight into the storage network. And this earth essence, it has a billion billion uses. It has leaves and it has dirt and it has other... Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm not going to autocraft that into anything. I'm just going to store dirt essence and I'm going to use it whenever I need it. Same with the fire essence and the elemental essences and all that stuff. But... Gold essence, that's basically, I mean, you can use it for some decorations, but it's basically only good for gold ore. And what's the point of just having gold ore sitting around even once that's processed? So I'm just going to upgrade it straight to ingots. Now, I do have all the infrastructure in place to make energized smelters. These are new mechanism machines. They are RF-powered furnaces. But cobalt and ardite are also things that I am going to want to smelt to ingots. And cobalt and ardite do not play with furnaces, not even energized ones. They only want to be melted in a crucible furnace or a smeltery. And let's face it, I don't like crucible furnaces. So we are building smelteries. And we're going to have to build two of them. One for cobalt, one for all the ardite, because we don't want them to alloy. So we're building two smelteries already as it is. I mean, we might as well just smelt everything inside of them. So that is how we are going to do. I am going to dig out space for two relatively big smelteries in our processing area. And I am just going to route everything that gets smelted into them. And I will have to figure out a way to empty that smeltery safely, but I think I can do that. I have some ideas. And yeah, I am just going to have to do some excavating. So I will get back to you in a minute. Quick aside, while touring the base, you might have noticed that this auto-assembler in the basement of the Managen, it sometimes breaks down in a weird way. Sometimes when you travel between dimensions, it stops making magical food and you have to, like, deconstruct it and reconstruct it. Yeah, it was just being buggy working off the drawer network. As far as I can tell, they always work when they are directly drawing from storage drawers. So I used my new god-level tool 
to move those drawers around, and now all of those drawers are directly touching the auto assembler, connected by trim, and it will just automatically work all the time. You know what? If I'm going to be building a huge logistics network, I might as well do it the right way. So, let's make one last tier of alloy to make that one last tier of piping. This one is a little bit of an odd one. You have to run obsidian through the enrichment chamber once to turn it into dust. Then you have to run it through the infuser to get this refined dust. Then you have to run it through the enrichment chamber one more time to get this compressed obsidian. Well, we don't have to. We can put it in here, but I mean, with this much extra processing, eh, might as well. Anyway, once we run our enriched alloys, let, let's run through the whole process. We start with iron. We infuse it with redstone. That'll give us the enhanced alloy. We run that through diamond. That'll give us the next tier, and then we run it through the obsidian, and that'll give us the final tier. And we can use that to upgrade pipes eight at a time, eight per, to the ultimate tier. Mm. Mm. Tier one. Tier 2, Tier 3, and Tier 4, Ultimate Logistical Transporters. Two stacks a second and moves at 10 blocks per second. Not frickin' bad. So, let's start to talk about how we are going to tickle all of this. As you see, I have a little hole here leading down in here, and I have my smelteries all set up over here. They're running off of our lava system. Now, this first plot that we have here isn't going to have anything to smell. But it does have some things that I am going to want to send to processing, namely these essence dusts. And maybe I've kind of agonized over this, but I think, yeah, I am going to process these pumpkins and I'm going to make some sort of automated composter. Because I would like some compost built up just in case for when I set up, you know, situational farms like our coal farm or or like the titanium farm, just so that I have compost on hand. But we also have ones that we are going to want to store because these nature seeds, they're used for mossy cobblestone and vines and a bunch of other things. And I think these skeleton soul seeds, yeah, I'll just store them as essence. So we are going to need to send these to at least two different destinations. And I forgot to make a logistical sorter. Please give me a moment. No, it's like that. Logistical sorter. So with tech our logistical sorter and the big trick that we are going to do Yes, you see that these ultimate pipes are a very pretty purple color. I approve. Yes. We are going to be coloring the pipes. At least we're going to be coloring the destinations. So, I think... Where is the hole? There is the hole. I think the way that we're going to handle this is... We're going to have a drawer net right over here somewhere. And that will be destination red. 
or whatever. Okay, so to color a pipe, you take your configurator and you kind of have to do something weird. There is a control called in mechanism. There it is. Mechanism item mode switch. I have mine set to U, but I believe it defaults to M and it clashes with something. Anyway, once you have that bound to something that works, you take your configurator and you sneak and you press the you press that hotkey and you see I have this thing configuration heat item blah, 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 blah. does all those different modes. It can act as a wrench, it can rotate machines, it can do all sorts of things. But what we want it is to set it to configurate items. Then if we take it and we shift right click on the center of a block, we can color it. Now if we go back upstairs and we go to that logistical sorter, I can take an item and I can set a filter and I can say item stack. Essence of nature goes to dark blue. Now, what that means is that when this logistical sorter pulls an essence of nature from this chest, it will send it towards any pipes that have been colored dark blue, and only those pipes. And it will do all the routing for us. We just need to set that color at the destination. So, we can have go straight to storage as dark blue, and we can have our processing chain on whatever the next color is. I think it might be dark red. And we can just tell the logistical sorter that the items that we want to send to those destinations go to that color. It's very, very simple. It is very, very smart. It is very, very sexy. <sighs> okay. As you can see here, I have the two items that we're storing to dark blue and the two items we're processing to dark green. And I have those pipes laid out. If I put a sample of all four in here, they all sort. And I wish there was a way to make this thing shut up, like if there was a muffler upgrade for it, but oh well. It's something I'm just going to have to deal with, I guess. Now, down the stairs, I set up two drawer networks. We're using these as piping again. The storage one is up on top side, and I actually should have showed it to you. And the processing one on dark green is over here. And you can see the dark blue pipe right there. So, let's do our first processing chain. I am going to take this essence dust, and I am just going to go right off the front here. And where are my stones? My stones are up in the magic crops chest. Well, that gives me an opportunity to show you the other drawer net. Yep. I decided that my wall O storage is just going to be sitting out here in front, easy access, relatively close to all my other crafting areas, fairly central-ish, good spot. And yes, you see the crafting works perfectly correctly. I throw in an essence of skeleton. It was 12 before. It is 16 now. Excellent. So, I am going to take that essence dust and I am just going to process it all the way up to top tier. Because if, for whatever reason, I need a lower tier essence, it can always be decrafted. So, I, of course, I need some actual essence dust on me, so... One, two, three, four. Okay, so I take the weak stone. I take the dust. And I enable. Oh, these output slots also need another one, so I need to make myself another one of all these stones. Okay, be right back. Okay, that's all better. Now I believe that if I put this here, then yeah, 
it starts making all that weak essence. So then I wonder if I can directly do this in auto assemblers. Let's see here. So regular, doop the doop, put that there, put that there, and can it pull? Yes, it can. Okay, so this is gonna be real easy. Just need to step it on up. Okay, why aren't you pulling? You should be, there should be tonnins. Oh, I see, okay, so. But, but then I put in a whole stack of essence dust. Where did it all go? That was weird, okay. Do we have a problem? Let's see. Yeah, I, I just harvested this field, and it should have given me a whole ton of the weak stuff to compress into the next tiers. I mean, it's okay if the process is lossy. It'll be automated, just so long as it's... Yeah, well, okay, uh, huh. I guess I'll just, yeah, go with it. Go with the flow. Did I turn all these on? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, that's weird. And I guess I am going to need a pipe. No, wait, I have pipes on me. What am I doing? And yeah, I think the way the auto assemblers work, I can just draw directly off of it. And another trick, if the pipe that you are drawing with is colored, then it will just go straight to that destination. You only need the logistical sorter if you want to send items to multiple destinations. So because this pipe is dark blue, it will go to our storage. And I can just put it right on our pipe network and it will route. Very, very neat. So... I think that now all I need is to put a golem down. I will get back to you when I have one. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like putting just a drawer down drew out the extreme infusion stone. So I need to make sure... Yeah, I might have to put a logistical sorter on it after all, because... Otherwise, every time I put down a new drawer, unless I pre-program it, yeah. Okay, that's not too big of a deal. You saw that logistical sorters are fairly easy to make. But now that we have a destination there, let's just... I'm going to craft this down to... Essence dust. And let's run a test. Let's see if this thing is indeed being lossy. So, on this tier of the assembler, we have none in storage. When I put in this stack of essence dust, we should have one sitting in there waiting to become extreme. So, let's plunk this in the input chest. Doop -doop 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 -doop. It goes click click. And there we go. Okay, so the process is not lossy. It was just, I don't know, acting weird. Ah, still. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Okay, I will get a logistical sorter on that. Quick aside. 
Taking eight microblocks covers and forming them like this gives you eight hollow covers, which can be used just to button up pipes. Come on. I think I have to take this logistical sorter off. Yeah, maybe I can get it from above. Yeah, it can be... Yeah, okay, I saw it. I saw it. Come on. There we go. Uh, there. Yes. When you don't have a logistical sorter in your way, it is very, very easy to make things very, very pretty and completely button up all of your piping. Okay. Let's get this thing done. As you can see, I swapped out the centers here for these gold essence lamps because I realized that I'm going to wall this whole thing off. Well, I'm going to wall it off over here, I guess. So yeah, I'm not going to have to put up all those torches, but might as well make it fully lit inside. Anyway, we have our lovely new friend. Congratulations. Your home is right there. Gently nudge you out of the way. And off he goes. But yes, you can see that I have my standard setup here. I extended the pipe up to the ceiling so that when we get to automating the next layer up, we will have that pipe ready to access. And I just buttoned it up with a bunch of microblocks covers. Hmm, that camera noise. This pack does not have sound mufflers. <sighs> oh well. I guess it's not too big of a deal. But, yeah. Maybe I should change it so it pipes like... So instead of having a logistical sorter, this thing is all just, I don't know, on color pink or whatever. And that goes down to a chest that's a hell of a far away, and that has the logistical sorter doing all the sorting. That would be less crafting for me anyway. Hmm. That's a thought. Okay, let's try this setup out. As you can see, I moved the pipe over. It is now purely extracting from a pipe. It has colored our next color, this lovely teal blue. And since I don't have the logistical sorter in here, I can have the solignolias in a slightly better position. And yeah. Okay, so let me just harvest a few random things. I pulled the golem up while I was working on this, young Mr. Scott. Okay, so you see they're all being pulled out. And because that pipe is colored, it will route towards the color that it is, even though it doesn't have a logistical sorter on it. It will just send everything down to this buried teal box. Yes. And now, if I can remember which one is which, okay, green is processing. Now I can clear out a little bit more space and I can, oh, I had a crash. Okay, let's try that one again. That was weird. So we set a new filter. Okay, this time we give it essence dust. We route it to dark green and now, if I give it... Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it should be able to route to there. Maybe because it is dark green, it cannot pass through that colored cable. Let's try that. Yes! Okay, so that is something you need to note, is that if you have it set to route to a color, it means it cannot route through other colors. But that is easy enough to fix. 
So this nature goes to dark blue. This skeleton goes to dark blue. And this pumpkin goes to dark green. Okay, now let's go back up on the surface and let's see how the sound is. I might have to dig a little bit deeper to get myself precious, precious silence. Ah uh, yes, and note that I made this emerald essence glass. That's just a little bit of emerald essence with glass around it. I think it looks nice and neat. I'll probably have like stained glass colors on each individual farm. So, harvest, harvest, harvest. Uh, I can still hear it. Uh, if I dig deeper, then I'm going to have to walk down farther to program that chest each time. But it only needs to be programmed once. Okay. But I think you get the idea of what I'm going to do now. It's just going to be dug a little bit deeper down. Okay. I have the pumpkins being auto-crafted to seeds, and I have the seeds being piped into these composters. I just kind of roughly guessed how many it would need to keep up with production. We will see if that is true. And yes, as you can see, single pipe extracting on dark blue to storage. Screw it. Sick and tired of having to root through all of these rolling machines whenever I need to get stuff. These build craft labels are made just very simply out of six slabs arranged like this. You put them on the thing and you shift right click them and you can put up to three items on them. But just one is all I need for this. Never be confused again. Okay, I've decided on the next plot. I will be doing this one because I will need botania petals for all of these solignolias and hopper hawks. Now, the botania petals we're storing, the dye seeds we're storing, the earth seeds we're storing, but these tin seeds, we have our first metal. So, you can see over here that I've already got the sorting for all the botania stuff and all that done, and I even, downstairs, have the essence of tin being sorted into hya. But we have to complete the processing chain still. I think I will do it down here, just so I don't have to deal with these pipes. So, essence of tin, of course, is processed just by doing that. And we are going to have to pipe it out over to the smeltery. So let's just decide. I imagine these smelters were going to essentially want to put each of these on a different color. And we will just have them on the same piping network, and we will tell things where to go by color. That is proving to be the best method of routing. So, let's see here. Just in case, I'm not going to put them on any of the first three. So let's make this one blue, green, aqua, red, dark red. And this one will be purple. Eh, that's not visually distinct enough from red. That's not visually distinct enough from blue. Uh, 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 uh. Yellow, maybe, could do. Okay, so we have dark red and yellow. This 
tin, I think, will be sent to the dark red line. So I'm just going to have to route that over. I think I'll have, actually, yeah. Yeah, that should do. That should do just fine. Okay. And I can pull it up over here. Okay. And because it cannot route through colors, just in order to get these all connected up, I need to make a bypass over here. And just continue on the routing. Or survey over here. And we might have to do some fancy, fancy things when we get to making all the other routing over here, but that should not be a problem. So we set this to pull. Yep, that puts it in the smelt tree controller for dark red. So we have tin smelting in this one. Now, once that melts down, we need to figure out how we are going to be piping this all out. I think that in this case, for this purpose, I need a combination of fast and compact. And that means, I think, using casting basins. I don't normally use them because they aren't good for, you know, manual use, but this isn't being used manually. This is being used automatically. So, to route it all around, I am going to be using Buildcraft pipes. Because, as I said before, the fluid pipe actually does route successfully. So, and I'm going to need an autarkic gate. Autarkic. Sure, yes. And this, I think, is going to be the only other major processing thing we're going to be doing here, because other than making compost and making essence, everything else is either being stored or being turned into metal. So once I have this process figured out, the whole project is basically just going to be expanding on this. So let's take this out the side. No, the hole is right there. Let's take it out the front. Let's put that autarkic gate on there. And I'm just going to set it to redstone signal off, send energy pulsar. So in other words, it is constantly on until and unless we give it a redstone signal. Just going to get a little bit of space there. And diamond pipe. So... Yeah, you see it's actually routing through here, but I think that once we set filters on it, it won't do that. So, I think that I can just do this in NAI. I think that if I take this and now click and drag it, I get a ghost item version of it. I can't put this in my inventory unless I'm in cheat mode. But I think that this ghost can be used. No. Nope. No, 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 no. It cannot be used. Dang it. I guess that's only for applied energistics. Okay, that is not too terrible of a problem. All it means is that I am going to have to go up into my other smelter and I am going to have to get myself a bucket of tin. I will be back to you in a moment. Okay. To get a bucket of tin, you just, of course, melt some tin, put a bucket in the table, and there it goes. Now, 
You notice that it does in fact fill up a full bucket, and an ingot is not exactly 100 millibuckets of stuff, so yeah, this is kind of a messy amount of ingots, but I have a fix for that once I get the system working. So, I can take this down to our filter, and I can tell it tin on red. And I believe that now that I have a filter set, I should be able... And yeah, you see how it's only going down red? Neat. So, I can then take this casting basin, doop a doop, and there we go. So now I just need to put a hopper on that and pipe it out into our storage once I set up a compacting drawer top side. Oh yes, and uh, before I forget, the solution I have to the messy bucket problem is I have an extra drain on the back of the smeltery over here because some thing, some that recipes call for molten metal, but I've never used them yet, but they're still out there. Anyway, I just have a tank here with the pipe pulling in because drains can be used for both input and output. So now the smeltery is nice and even again, and I can cast out those ingots. Okay, everything is set up. It is time for our next golem. Congratulations, sir. I picked out this room's colors just for you, teal and dark blue. I hope you like it. Your home is here. Hopper hook. Don't want me on the flowers. And there we go. <sighs> what next? 